Hey you guys, welcome back to Southern Latitudes. I'm Robin and I garden in East Central Florida and um, today's project is gonna be slowly working uh, the back side of the house garden. I really do need to do the front side, which is where the, um, up there closer to the house. That's where the peppers are gonna go and we need to get uh, the manure there and um, plants in the ground. But that's in the full sun right now. I'm still having a little trouble with my cold now, uh, perhaps giving me some fluid in the ears or station tubes or something. So I had dizziness this morning and I couldn't come right out and work first thing in the morning. And um, that's okay, we got all that under control now. And so I am like, what can I do out here? I did have some extra shade, so I did mow this area. We got both the grow tables out of here. Uh, I need to um, move these next. I don't have the strength for that right now, but I need um, a dolly and we'll move those next. But at least this part's mowed. Uh, everything needs, oh, I, I don't think I've edged in like a month. <laughs> and it shows. And so I gotta pull that out in just a little bit. Maybe tonight when it's cooler, I'm thinking. So I'm still in shade, well I was for the most part over here. I had all those pepper cages tomato cages and such so I put them back where they belong I had all the T posts were here for when we were doing the tree work so they've all gone back over um, to the original home the pepper cages are going to go in the garden soon enough so they're just there kind of temporarily and I just pulled the cage out from not cage but the fencing out from around this back half of house garden now it was put there because buddy was going from the house to the fence line all the time to go for squirrels when we first came out of the house so he was using the garden as a cut through and that's probably before we had the cattle panels up so i put the fencing up and that kind of squashed all that bad behavior for him but what it's done is left an incredible mess and all this grass this mostly saint augustine really has been um, growing through those those wires. And it was a bear, a complete bear to get out of there. Um, and I really didn't want to come through. It's just a disgusting mess, isn't it? It's This is embarrassing, but sometimes, you know, over summer, that's what happens with our gardens and, and we don't tend to them because it's hot or illness or travel or whatever. And um, doesn't even matter, you know, I'm not judging you because look, I live in a very glass, green glass house. <laughs> um, so my main goal is just to clean up the edge. It's a simple goal. It sounds like it'd be easy to do, but I'm expecting probably two days worth of work to get, get this cleaned out. Because one of my other projects and goals is um, the second cattle panel here first needs to be lifted and straightened, then manure put down, and then this is where my um, hybrid tomatoes, like the Jet Stars and the Chef's Choice Bicolor, what else? Um, the Hassanator, the Florida 91, and there was Dixie Red. All of those are hybrids, and I want to put them on cattle panels. Now, I did want to change the layout of this garden at some point, but the Roselle are still, they're just starting to put the blooms on. I can't pull that right now. So maybe in the dead of winter, before we go into spring, I'll change things around. I would assume that those uh, determinate, hi yeah, determinate hybrids, which just put all the fruit on at once and then die, will be done and by then I will be able to change the configuration on this garden once and for all. It's really hard to do that when you constantly keep planting in there. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, and then put up cattle panels as well and fencing and I can't even get in here where the, the pineapples are in here somewhere. Um, I have this weed. Look at this. Okay, so it's on my phone. Hold on, let me get that, the, t the name of it. Oh, good, we got a cloud for a second. Okay, so I took a picture of it with my Picture This Plant app. It's called Common Wireweed, or Southern Cida, Common Fan Petals, Spiny Head Cida, Broomweed, br Broomgrass, Cheeseweed, Clock Plant, Morning Mallow, 
a spiny head spider snake's tongue. It's got a lot of different names, but it's actually really beautiful. The pollinators, or at least the wasps, seem to like it. Um, but, you know, it doesn't belong here at all, and it will be going. Uh, I notice it's more of a morning bloomer, and so, and I don't, I see seeds are starting to get set right here, and we don't want that. So as beautiful of a weed as it is, um, I definitely want to take care of that like today and um, just start clearing out my past so I can walk between here, start clearing off the cattle panel, fixing it, uh, and just, you know, anyhow, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. So uh, my, uh, my next, next task is to get the weed whacker out here, put some glasses on for safety, and uh, just uh, start knocking this high stuff back. I really can't see anything. Also, uh, up here in the front is where I usually keep my bunching onion bed. And uh, I'm pretty certain that, um, well, my bun bunching onions are done in the tray and they're ready to go in a bed. So I'll fix that bed up. Again, that'll probably take me a day or two. Okay, you guys, well, I, I think a storm is coming. I'm gonna check Fairify Lightning how close it is. But um, I, I'm at this point, I wanna update you again. Uh, I got all the fencing removed, you saw that, and then I tried to weed whack around it. Boy, that was tough, tough, tough. I gotta go back through a second time, clean up stuff. It was so incredibly hard. Um, Cause it, I mean, it's just, it's long and it gets stuck in the weed whacker. Uh, which I need to probably put up. I hear thunder. Um, so I removed the second cattle panel. That's completely gone. And I used one of the posts to go in the center here just to support the tomatoes of this fall and winter. Um, I cleaned off most of the cattle panel. I still got to clean off on inside this row. I worked on cleaning. Believe it or not, this is cleaned up. I'm, I'm telling you, it was bad. It was bad, bad. Um, and the whole, everything underneath the Roselle, I mean, there was like, um, crabgrass galore under there. I rolled back all the ground, you know, put the drip lines up, rolled back what I could up into the Roselle, all of the ground fabric, landscape fabric. And, uh, that left me a nice little clear spot, which I'm going to amend probably next but I can just throw manure I probably give it a light till before or after the manure I'm not sure um uh, this definitely probably needs tilling remove the weed part and uh get all that done in there still got quite a bit to do till till this section right in here where I want to put the punching onions those I could throw in pretty fast tie up I did tie up the roselle if you guys grow Roselle, just know you need to tie it. But see what's happening is the, the rope was pretty thin. And so as the plant grew and went outward, it stressed a lot of the line and broke it free. So I have this, where's that piece? There's a piece in here that's really broke. The calyx are fantastic. I need to pull those. Oh, here it is. See, the, the plant is just very brittle. And... Um, so if you don't stake it, it will absolutely fall and break and then that part won't continue to grow. Now I have plenty of other little sections that will. Uh, and I collected a lot this spring. Normally there's a, um, a thin leaf roselle and uh, that one just blooms in the fall. But this variety, whatever the actual name of it is, did bloom in the spring and in the fall. It's not light dependent, daylight shortening length dependent. It's not. The, um, this one just likes it either spring or fall. So I, I was just trying out a new variety just for fun. And oh, and here we go. Here's some dried calyxes that I'll save the seed with. Um, somebody um, off of Facebook gave me some of the seeds. So that was really nice. I just asked and she, you know, put it in a put a little stamp on it and it came to me. So anyhow, that was very sweet of her. Um, I should tie that up. I'm trying to think what, what other to do's were there. I just definitely got to clean at least the path. 
this I could tackle also another day, but I want to clean the path. And the little wasps are all over this weed. So it's a little sometimes dangerous. Here, I'll show you. See, they're like a little wasp. I don't know what they are, but they do sting. It doesn't hurt as bad as a big wasp, but it, it does zap you pretty good in the legs if you get them. And um, I also have cucumelons. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, here, it was all over that, that fencing back there. So anyhow, I'm making progress. Wanted to update you and let you see what's going on. That ground fabric is gonna stay right there for right now. And I haven't actually made a decision if ground fabrics, I think it's gonna go back in here, but I don't know if I'm just gonna cut that off where it is and put it new. I, I don't know, I have to think that through. I'm a little bit of a slow thinker. I like to think of all the possibilities, the right and wrong that could happen. So I have yet to, to conclude on that decision. All right, you guys, it is officially three days later, I believe, maybe four since the last clip. And uh, I did the mushroom logs and then the next day I edited that video, put it out. And then I managed to hurt my back just sitting. <laughs> That's what happens when you get a little bit older. And sometimes I don't know because I have inflammation, uh, autoimmune issues. Um, I managed last night to get one row of uh, the horse. I'm so used to saying mushroom compost. One row of the aged horse manure in over there. I stopped, I had to ice all night and um, and I couldn't jump right into it today, but uh, in the morning, but I'm feeling much better and the guys have all gone off to a theme park. So I believe this is close to about eight, nine uh, wheelbarrows worth of um, the manure. And so it is kind of, oh, well, I guess more if you count yesterday's two or three wheelbarrows. Okay, so maybe about a dozen wheelbarrows all together for this garden. And, um, and it is kind of thin. I didn't want to be planting into solid manure. Uh, I just want the benefit of like compost tea coming in from the manure. So now my job will be to pull these uh, uh, landscape fabrics back here, add some more landscape fabrics. I think I threw one or two of these from this side in the shed. And so uh, I'll be back with you after that's done. Y'all, it's pretty dark. My neighbors are having a pool party. The cicadas are out like crazy. I've got the coverage I wanted and the drip lines are back down. All right, you guys, I think I have found a minute where the cicadas are not screaming their heads off. I was trying to end the video last night and then I thought, well, really, I'd like to end with planting something first. And then the cicadas were just screaming their heads off and I'm like, and then my neighbors were having a pool party. I think it's his birthday or something like that, the teenager there. And so I was just like, oh, it's not proper ending. So uh, anyhow, I totally got the manure on. As you can see, I've got the lining. Um, then I put the drip lines back down. I had to repair a drip line there. I had one just pop off the, um, just pop it back into the main line. That was easy. Stapled it all down kind of. Oh, uh, definitely the, the ground fabric, landscaping fabric. But um, the drip lines are only tied down at the very end because I really honestly wasn't sure how much I'm going to use and where I'm going to move it to. I did test it. You can see there's some water right here. I did test it. And then this afternoon, this has been a six day video. I literally went from Monday morning to now it's Sunday afternoon. So I put in my heirloom tomatoes because something's starting to gnaw on them. They're just so not happy in their little cups on the grow table. So if I can remember everything, I have some black brandy one here. I have a hossinator there. I've got a, two red snappers. I've got a Florida 91, no, two Dixie reds somewhere. Oh, Florida 91 is over there. Uh, three chef's choice by color. I didn't separate that one. I let it be with its friends. And then I have the rest are jet stars until you get here. And then I have a purple Russian, which may or may not stay there. It doesn't actually have drip to it. 
um, I don't know, I was kind of pushing it with the one foot, but I've also found, um, I don't know what year it was, last year or the year before, but uh, if you're in Florida and you worry about blight, okay, that's the number one worry when you put your tomatoes close together. Well, we're going into our dry season, right? We've had a very wet season. We're going into our dry season and I'm gonna walk and talk with you. And uh, so we're gonna have extremely low humidity and I am not concerned at all about blight because there's just not that much moisture. We'll be doing a lot of drip irrigation um, through the winter or hand watering. Occasionally we'll get a nice rain or something, but you know, especially as we, if these things all make it from winter into spring or um, the majority will anyhow, you know, they're gonna be dry, dry, dry by March. So I'm not worried about that. Let's go ahead and let me show you what I did outside. The wind is really picking up. Oh, I don't like that. You know, me and wind, we don't get along very good in this yard. So anyhow, I had gone to the Ace Hardware for chlorine and happened to see they had a beef steak. I think that's what they, these were. Yeah, beef steaks. They said five inches, but they were, they're actually about four inches or more down below. They were quite laggy, but I dropped them way deep in there and it was a six pack tray, but I actually ended up with 11 beef steaks that I didn't grow myself, but they're in here. And then I took a bunch of the, um, oh, I had a couple extra green vernissage uh, heirlooms, some holy basil right here. I popped it in a couple of places and then I put my little baby celosia down in here as well. It was starting to bloom. So we'll have a little drift of color right here um, to go along with my beautiful yellow and purple. So, and my basil made it all the way through summer. Can you believe that? I bought basil. Basil starts, um, I'll show you them in just a second. And I was thinking this thing was gonna die and look at its comeback. I've never had basil come back completely. <laughs> So this is absolutely crazy, but it's a good, happy, crazy. And I love the Rebecca Triloba right there, right next to it. Uh, I look forward to those perennials coming back. And then this is lemon bee balm and then a bunch of weeds. This is the last garden I'm going to get to work in. Tomorrow, I think we're going to manure up the salsa garden. Okay, let me get you over to here. So like I said, I was buying basil, right? And I pop them in right here. So I have a whole bunch of sweet basil here. This one I, is also basil, but it looks like a different type of basil. It's a Genovese basil. And uh, I think that might be the same seed that I used to grow the one way down there. So anyhow, and then these are jalapenos. I also bought at the store and popped those in. I'll just give you a little tour real quick. The celery took very well in the transplant and it is even though it's small, it's probably close to double, uh, doubled its size, which is really nice. These are all my black brandy wines in here. So I still need to put the cages up. I did bring the cages out. That might be tomorrow I get to do that. And then I have my Aunt Molly's ground cherries right here. Um, I have some other heirlooms. I, there might be a green vernissage, purple Russian or two in there. And then we got corbacci's down there. And then I put some broccolis in here. The seed that I put in like three, four days ago hasn't popped up yet, but the, the little starts are right in there. And then let me show you, you see all these babies right here? These are all gonna be turnips. So yes, I put turnips in holes. <laughs> I absolutely did. And I am forgetting what baby is this? Let me see. Oh, Dr. Weiss or Witchy. That's right. I had one, two, and a very small third come up out of that. So, ah, uh, almost fell over. Um, anyhow, that's what's going on. The dandelions still haven't popped up. The lettuce is slowly, slowly coming because it likes cooler temps to germinate. So it'll just sit there. It shouldn't rot. I've been watering everything pretty well. And well, y'all, I have to say I'm pretty excited to finally be finishing the first video of the week. <laughs> on Saturday. Oh, but I did interrupt and do mushroom logs, which was fantastic. And I love having them done. 
and you know we got that swirly thing coming um which it looks like it's gonna hit more or less at this point it looks like it's gonna hit the panhandle it may veer a little bit more depending on the front so anyhow it was super important to me oh you know the other thing i'm doing tomorrow is i have trays of peppers and so those are going to be going back in the house garden which are going right back up to okay so in case i don't take you along with me for the planting tomorrow we're going to zap all the little zap we're going to zap holes in the plastic and put all the peppers in right here we're going to put these bunching onions right here we're going to put them here and a little bit here we're going to kind of like line the edge and then over here i'm going to put in my probably uh no not probably not slicing cucumbers i'm probably gonna put in my pickling cucumbers there i don't know i could do slicing here i actually have extra cattle panel oh i could do both yes i could do both and um i wanted to put the the climbing and the trellis in front of the roselle because the roselle is already tall look at this so the roselle dropped a lot of its leaves it's it's not been happy through summer but it is putting on all brand new growth. Look, see, that's the unhappy leaves. It's putting on brand new growth. I know we started the video talking about that at one point. Oh, so anyhow, and then um, I don't know what else is going in here. I did consider some okra back here in this corner and I do have like six okras. So with that being said, you guys, I think we're done. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video. Ha <laughs> ha!